Hi, my name is David and I'm making this video to explain how to use a custom user function I've made in Excel for the purpose of evaluating summations such as you see here on the right side of the screen in a Google Doc, which is something I mocked up real quick. This kind of sigma summation is not really possible in a straightforward and super quick manner within your original Excel package, so I've just made a function to allow that kind of computation, make that really easy to do within a single cell just like any other Excel function. So that's what I'm going to be showing in this video. So I've just made up some mock data on the left here to illustrate how to use this. So on the left, what we see here is essentially what you would have to make if you wanted to compute this kind of summation within Excel. Make a little data table, have your argument values, x from limits of summation, 1 to 10, and have your argument. So if I say over here x squared, then that is what your argument would be uh, based on your argument, that is what your expression would evaluate to. So I just have these cells corresponding to each argument of x squared, as you'd expect. And then finally, your result would be a cell indicating what the sum of all those outputs would be. So kind of tedious. If you have many of these to compute, can be a pain. It's just something that could be streamlined and automated. So here's how you can use the function I made. It's called sigma sum, and you can see here how it has the same result as the uh, old school kind of breakdown method. So basically this is going to have a few arguments. First we can look at the expression argument. So this is referencing right now the cell containing x squared just written out as a string. Now something important to note, you'll notice this is not beginning with an equal sign. Like uh, you might imagine, you know, in a typical Excel function you'll start off with an equal sign. So you might say something like equals 5 to the power of 2. But uh, for the input to this function, you're going to enter that without an equal sign. So you're going to enter a string indicating an expression without an equal sign in the front. And that can include Excel functions, which is uh, pretty cool. So this could include uh, sum, or f so I can express, I could show you that with this example right here. Instead of doing equals x to the power of 2, you'll know that, oops, let's say x equals 5. Instead of doing 5 to the power of 2 with a exponent notation, you can use the Excel function equals power 5, 2. So, oops, hit page down there. So for this function that I've created, you could simply type your power x2. And you'll see that this computed to the same thing again. So this is ca uh, compatible with Excel functions. I'll just leave it as x squared for now. Once you've added that as a string, you'll add the next argument separated by commas and this is going to be the variable that you're changing as a string so in this case x uh, and so a note there is that this could be multiple characters this although the, we do math often with single character variable names x y z p t v w whatever the case may be you could enter here a multiple character so for example i could enter units and then let me change this expression to say units squared and now this will return 385 as we expect so this string simply indicates what substring of our expression right here is the substring indicating that's the value that's going to be changed as we iterate through our uh, limits of summation and then your next argument your next two arguments are just going to be simple numbers which indicate the lower and upper bounds of summation so in this case, 1 and 10. And if you wanted to, that could also be referencing an Excel cell value, such as we just, just saw here. So that's uh, essentially how you use this. There's one other element I'll show, which is the idea of non-default stepping values. So imagine, uh, as we see here, imagine we had notation that was something like this x is basically odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, 7, oops, dot, dot, dot. Uh, how would you do this? This can be performed with the function I've created as well using uh, the optional argument for step size. So I've essentially uh, done the same process as what we saw on the left. I just entered s equals sigma sum, opening that function, enter the expression as a string, the uh, substring which is identifying the argument we're going to switch out and then the upper and lower bounds 1 and 19 and then the there's this extra argument right here which is 2 which is the step value so that's the value that we're going to increment or decrement our argument by every time 
uh, we iterate as we move up to the limit of summation. So this is basically performing what you see in the table. It's entering x equals 1 into x squared, x equals 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, etc. until it reaches 19, at which point we're after adding all these uh, intermediate sums, we're going to have our final result. So you can see that matches what we have here. So that's the um, clean cut uh, version of this function that I've made. And you can download the Excel add-in. It's a .xlam file from my GitHub page. I'll share that in the video description. And what I'll show you now, for those who might be interested in, is a further generalized form of this function. Uh, so I, I took this further and made it generalizable for any number of uh, changing argument values and any number of nested summation terms. So for example, what we see on the right side here, this can uh, be computed in Excel without my function in this kind of format. You'd have to make a data table as earlier. And essentially, you'd have one record for every possible combination of inputs. So we see here x goes from 1 to 2 and y goes from 1 to 5 for the expression x to the power of y. So we have x equals 1, y equals 1, x1, y2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, etc. And then the same pattern, y equals 1 to 5 for x equals 2. So your result is the sum of all of these uh, outputs, x to the power of y for these arguments. and there you go, that's your final solution. Instead of making that data table, which you can imagine would be uh, potentially a big hassle for uh, different, like much larger sizes of argument lists, l larger, disc larger differentials between your lower and upper bounds, that kind of situation, you can use the multi sigma sum function I've created. And that's going to function in a very similar way to the sigma sum function we discussed earlier. So your first argument is going to be the string containing your expression. And as we mentioned before, this can be uh, using Excel f um, functions. So I could write here power x, y. And that's going to function the same. But for now, I'll write x to the power of y. And just another note, you could also write that as a string directly into the function. So I can add here open quotes, x, exponent, y, close quotes. So for now, I'll just make a reference the cell value. And now, uh, the R, now from here on out, the function changes so as to be able to handle this generalized case of multiple parameters, multiple limits. So the next argument will contain, as it did before, the different parameters that we're changing, the variables. So it's going to contain them in one argument by using a array, a constant array that's declared in the argument. So this array is going to be one dimensional, but it's going to have multiple elements corresponding to your different variables. And these are going to be strings once again. So as before, we'll type in x as a string with quotes, and in this case y. And once again, these names could be whatever you liked, or whatever suited your case. And then you're going to close your array once you have those entered. And just note that the order, the sequence in which those should be entered, should be the sequence that they appear here in the nesting of your summation signs. So then you're going to have the next argument, which similarly to, to before, how we had the limit information following the variable name. Now we're going to have one argument containing all uh, summation limit information for these different variables. So that's going to look, that's going to be a multiple dimensional array. So we're going to start it off with the open curly brace. And then we're going to enter information relating to the first variable indicated in the uh, variable array. So in our case, that's x here. So we're going to start off with the lower bound, in this case 1, and then comma, a new element in the array will be 2, the upper bound, and then the next element will be the step size. So we'll go with the default expected value of 1. And now we're going to use a semicolon to indicate a new dimension, a new layer to this multi-dimensional array. And this will correspond to the subsequent variable that we've indicated in our input, the second argument, so in this case y. So the lower bound of y is 1, upper bound is 5, step size is 1. So I have entered that. And now we're going to close the array because we've entered all the information for each variable in our system. And that's pretty much it. Close the array, close the function, and you end up with your result there, 67, which matches what the original output was. 
So just to illustrate a different example and, and the show the degree to which this is generalized, you could have this kind of function here on the right. And you'd express that by saying equals multi sigma sum. And now I'll open a string to say x times y to the power of 2 times z to the power of 3. And go to the next argument, which will be an array containing our um, arguments in the sequence that they appear in the nested summations. x, y, z. Close that array. And now next argument, so separated by a comma, we're going to have the last array argument, which is going to be the bound information. So I'm op opening that array. Now for x, we're going from 1 to 2. And we'll just assume default step sizes. So 1, 2, 1. Semicolon. For y, the bounds are 3 and 4, assuming 1 step size. Semicolon, once again, to, to separate it from the z information. And the bounds there are 1, 5 and 6, rather, with a step size of 1. So we're going to close that array now and have the result. So just like that, within one cell, uh, Excel rapidly computes that to be equal to 25,575. So that's how you use the multi-sigma sum function. Pretty similar, except more powerful, more generalized. Um, now, just for fun, um, I can show you some interesting things, some things I thought were interesting about this kind of tool. So. If we look at our original function, uh, what we see here is a plot. Three distinct uh, formulae are plotted here. So the blue line is x, linear, just x equals y, y equals x. And we can see how comparis in comparison to x squared, it's rapidly obviously diverging from x squared because x squared is a parabola. So the middle function is the summation of x. So the middle function is as following, we'll see it on the right hand side. So it's a function of n, and it's equal to the summation from x equals 1 to n of x. So we can see how that red line is a lot greater. It has this nonlinear characteristic, so it's rapidly diverging from x. But at the same time, it's different in nature. It's from the x squared value because uh, there's not multiplication occurring. There's this 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 decreasing summation. I mean, x equals uh, let's say 10 plus 9 plus 8 plus 7 plus 6, that kind of thing. So we can see how it's uh, different in characteristically uh, from the x squared function. So I thought that was interesting. And we can see a different example of that over here. Uh, this example over here shows two things, uh, well, three things. The red line is x squared, so it's, that's a parabola. And it's really flat, which is unusual to see in a parabola. And that's because if you look at the y-axis, it's so enlarged as a result of the output of this blue line, which is the summation. So we, this function here, f of n, from sum from x equals 1 to n, of x squared. So we can see how summation of x was, you might say, halfway to uh, x squared. You might say that they diverge, but uh, not nearly as rapidly as, the, as x squared does from plane y equals x. Whereas the summation of x squared diverges very rapidly from x squared as an isolate uh, single output function. So I thought that was pretty interesting to look at. And the green line, the green dots over here show a curve for the same summation function that we see right here, except it also has this modification of having this term 1000 sine x subtracted from it. So that's why we see this oscillating pattern. It's following the blue curve uh, very exactly because it's the same function simply having a value subtracted from it. So that's all for this video. Again, I'll share uh, links in the description for where you can download this uh, add-in file to use this formula. And I'll be making another video showing how it works in VBA for those of you who are interested. And lastly, if you guys want to support me on Patreon, you can feel free to do so. I'll share a link in the description there as well. I'm hoping to be planning on uh, going to be uploading a lot of content and hopefully keep it a lot of give you guys a lot of value add. So thanks uh, for watching. I hope this uh, was valuable for you and maybe you can use it. Thanks for your time. Take care.